Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Holy Spirit Revealed This Today. This week, I'm going to go over um, things that Holy Spirit has revealed to me and supernatural signs and wonders that I've seen from February 29th through March the 5th. Um, so I want to go over a couple things before I get started, um, since some of you might be new. Um, each morning, Holy Spirit shows me scripture, and I'm led to scripture with my eyes closed. I totally yield to Holy Spirit. Um, I go through a whole prayer process, um, inviting Holy Spirit, shutting down all the voices of the enemy, um, kind of sound a little bit like Amanda Grace <laughs> in the morning time, um, and just inviting the Lord um, to to be with me as I'm led to scripture. And then I ask for wisdom and understanding and revelation and Holy Spirit faithfully every morning shows me scriptures that are pertaining to this day that we're living in. It's taken me some time to kind of figure out what's going on here with this. Um, it's not like when he gave me this anointing, he said, okay, this is what it is. <laughs> it was kind of, it's kind of been a process of discovery. So um, what happens is when I'm led to the scripture, I, pref I um, declare the scripture prophetically into our time. Um, and a lot of the scriptures, as you'll see, pertain to people and events that are happening today. Um, and also things that the Lord wants us to know about his relationship with us um, and what he desires from us and things like that. So he also confirms with biblical numbers. And so um, I want to just let you know that I'm going to be talking about prophetic numbers a lot throughout this um, video. And I do each time because that's how the Lord confirms things to me. Um, I know that the enemy uses numbers as well, but he's a counterfeit and he steals what God creates. And so um, all through the Bible, God uses numbers to communicate. And so there's a really good book that I refer to every morning when I'm shown these numbers, and it's called Numbers That Preach. And it's by Pastor Troy Brewer, who has a ministry in Texas. And so I really, really appreciate all the work he put into that book um, because um, the Lord is really confirming things through numbers. Um, and all the information, um, of how to, um, follow me or see what I'm posting each day, um, is in the description box. I post on X, I post on true social. I do have a blog that the Lord told me to do, um, called Holy Spirit revealed this today. And the information and link for the blog is also in the description box. Um, and of course, I've got this YouTube channel and I'm also on Rumble. So um, so anyway, welcome and I'm glad that you're here. Um, I give all glory to God and all honor to God for this video, for every single thing he shows me, for everything I'm sharing with you. Um, it's all from him. I'm just the vessel. So I want to pray this in. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I dispatch your warring angels, your communication angels, and your camouflage angels to protect this video recording, to place a hedge of protection around me, around my family, my home, and around all who watch this recording to hide this video from the enemy. I declare Isaiah 54, 17, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise up against us, we shall show to be in the wrong. And Luke 10, 19 says, behold, I've given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. And Matthew 16, verse 19 says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So standing on these scriptures, I sever all witchcraft off me, off my family, off of our homes, off of my social media platforms, off of this video. I bind you and I render every demon deaf, dumb, blind, and paralyzed. I bind and forbid you from manifesting in my home against my family members, against their homes, against our health, against our pets' health, against our electronics, our appliances, and our vehicles. I forbid you from sabotaging this broadcast or any of my social media platforms in any way, shape, or form. Only the Holy Spirit can manifest here. Holy Spirit, have your way with me during this broadcast. Amen. So I wanted to start out with some confirmations. Um, let's see, I've got some pictures. Okay, so Amanda Grace gave a word um, in Louisiana at Praise Church. 
And it was concerning the Jewish people in Israel recognizing Jesus as their Messiah. And the Lord confirmed that that is going to happen. And um, I had posted a word on February 19th. Um, I was led to scripture in Zechariah 11 and 12. And I entitled it, They Will Worship the One They Pierced. And I had said, as Jerusalem is supernaturally defended and God pours out his spirit, his people will turn away from the false shepherd and in deep repentance, they will worship Jesus, the pierced one, the one they rejected, the one they crucified. So um, that's amazing. And I cannot wait to see that happen. And then there was another confirmation from Kelsey Agama. And he confirmed a couple of things. Um, the Lord confirmed actually through him. Um, one was concerning victory for Israel. And so that same word that I just mentioned also talked about victory for Israel. And I've actually had several um, scriptures that the Lord has led me to that prophesy um, victory for Israel. Most of those scriptures are in Zechariah. Um, and then also he, the Lord, um, confirmed judgment upon New York through Kelsey. Um, and I had written, oh my goodness, this was back. Let's see. I had posted, um, concerning scripture that I'd been shown about judgment upon New York city in particular, um, I had posted on September 19th, 2023 and August 21st, 2023. And I had said um, that, I think it's Isaiah 23 speaks of the judgment and humbling of Tyre, New York City in our day. God will use the Assyrians and Babylonians, which is the N-W-O gang to bring the city to ruin. And then also I had just, um, I'm going to share a word um, today. Let's see, is, am I sharing that today? I think so. Let me see. Yeah. So the other one I'm going to be sharing with you about the financial hub in New York City, which Kelsey, um, the Lord, confirmed through Kelsey. So yeah, so I'll be talking about that one and I'll point that out when it pops up. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So that was quite a few confirmations this week. All right. So starting with, and I, I told you February 29th, but it should be February 28th. So we're going to talk about February 28th through March the 5th today. So on February 28th, I was led to Micah 7, and it's titled, Behold the Light of His Glory and Freedom. And I wrote, after praying in the Spirit and inviting Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to lead me, they said, we will lead you to Scripture. With my eyes closed, I was led to open my Bible randomly, then grab a chunk of pages, then turn another page and another page, and I found they had led me to Micah 7 um, again. And they had just led me there three days prior. And this was the third time that they've led me to the scripture. So that we're got threes going on here. So I declared Micah 7 prophetically into our time. And I felt this message come into my spirit. Those that pervert justice are about to feel the heat of God's judgment. But the righteous shall keep their eyes upon the Lord through the coming darkness and behold the light of his glory. We shall rejoice as God delivers us. And Micah 7 verses 2 through 4 and 7 through 9 in the Amplified Classic stood out to me. The godly man has perished from the earth and there is none upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. Each hunts his brother with a net. Both their hands are put forth and are upon what is evil to do it diligently. The prince and the judge ask for a bribe. And the great man utters his evil desire. Thus they twist between them the course of justice. The best of them is like a briar. The most upright or the straightest is like a thorn hedge. 
The day of your watchmen, even of God's judgment and your punishment has come. Now shall be their perplexity and confusion. But as for me, I will look to the Lord and confident in him, I will keep watch. I will wait with hope and expectancy for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he pleads my cause and executes judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteous deliverance. And then another one stuck out to me. And that is Micah 7 verses 15 through 20. This is also in the Amplified. As in the days of your coming forth from the land of Egypt, I will show them marvelous things. The nations shall see God's deliverance and be ashamed of all their might, which cannot be compared to his. They shall lay their hands upon their mouths in consternation. Their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent, like crawling things of the earth. They shall come trembling out of their strongholds and close places. They shall turn and come with fear and dread to the Lord our God and shall be afraid and stand in awe because of you, O Lord. Who is a God like you who forgives iniquity and passes over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retains not his anger forever because he delights in mercy and loving kindness. He will again have compassion on us. He will subdue and tread underfoot our iniquities. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. You will show your faithfulness and perform the sure promise to Jacob and loving kindness and mercy to Abraham. As you have sworn to our fathers from the days of old. And when I posted this on X, I received a timestamp of 715. So I looked up scripture. I'm getting in the habit of looking up scripture to go with timestamps because it seems the Lord is confirming a lot more with timestamps. Um, so I came to Psalm for set for the time 715. I, I got Psalm 7 verse 15, which confirms today's message. So, and I included verses 14 through 16 in this for context. So Psalm 7, verse 14 through 16, behold, the wicked man conceives iniquity and is pregnant with mischief and gives birth to lies. Verse 15, he made a pit and hollowed it out and has fallen into the hole which he made before the trap was completed. His mischief shall fall back and return upon his own head and his violence come down with the loose dirt upon his own scalp. So, and then additionally, um, as I had mentioned, the number three was highlighted um, as I was shown the scripture three days prior, and this was the third time I was shown the scripture. So three is perfect completion, fullness, resurrection, God stamps three on divinity. There's three stages often to what God does. God is a God of progress. So step one, deliverance. Step two, wilderness. Step three, promised land. And I saw a lot of different hosts and things this week. Um, so I'll start out with what I saw on this particular day. So I drew the face on here so you can see him. So this is his head. And this is like his body, his wings going off here. Um, and I saw this as I was driving. I was like, oh my gosh, let me get to a stoplight or something so I can get a picture of this guy. He was here huge so let's see there we go so here he is without the drawing on him so you can you can see the outline so his eye is right here and this is his like the bridge of his nose right here and his mouth it's like he's yelling down at people <laughs> so i've got some other pictures of him So you can kind of see what he looked like. 
from a distance. So this is kind of, as I'm driving, this is what I was seeing. And I was just like, wow, wow, wow. He really took up the whole entire sky. I mean, he was just huge. So I have a testimony. Um, so I had um, a big filling in one of my teeth and I've had it since I was like a teenager or younger. Um, and it was a big filling. And when you have a big filling like that over time, the tooth kind of can't hold up and the tooth cracked. So I was having a lot of sensitivity with it. And um, I ended up um, at the the dentist and then he sent me to the endodontist where they were thinking they would do a root canal but the tooth was cracked so badly that they couldn't so they sent me to an oral surgeon so they had to remove it and I have to have some more dental work done um the end of this week so keep me in your prayers please um so when I went to the oral surgeon I went by myself because they weren't going to knock me out they were just going to do local anesthetic and then pull the tooth out so I mean, I, I did all the praying and covered, you know, bleed the blood of Jesus, you know, and cover my oral surgeon in the blood of Jesus and all these things I did. Um, and so the procedure went in very smoothly. I mean, I didn't feel a thing. And sometimes when the tooth is cracked, it'll come out in pieces. And I was like, come out in one piece, come out in one piece, I'm declaring so the tooth came out in one piece and even the oral surgeon was like, wow, it came out in one piece. That's amazing. You know, that's like this tooth was cracked so badly. I'm surprised it did that. So um, it, it, it was just smooth. So then, you know, I've got my mouth like they put a big piece of gauze in there. So I'm like, you know, biting down on gauze. I'm feeling kind of gnarly by this point. My face is all numb. And they gave me a bunch of extra gauze that I have to keep changing that gauze like every 30 minutes. So I get in my car and I my car is awesome. My car has no mechanical problems. Um, it's, a, it's an Infiniti <clears throat> QX80, big SUV. It's very reliable. I never have any problems with my car. So mind you, I'm by myself, biting down on this gauze and I go to start my car and my car is making the most weird sounds like on oh, it's going like ah, like this you know and it keeps going and it won't it's like it won't turn over the engine won't start but it's just and the car is shuddering so i'm sh i'm in the car the car like the car's possessed the car is shuddering and going <laughs> and i'm like oh my gosh so i go to turn the car off and it won't stop the car keeps shuddering and keeps doing that. It will not go off. So I have to start praying. I start praying and taking authority over it, taking authority over the enemy who is attacking through my car and the car stopped. I'm like, so then I can, the car wouldn't start. <laughs> now it won't start at all. So I'm taking authority. The car starts, starts normally. I drive off. I go down the road. And realize I'm start looking now. I'm starting to get myself together, and I'm looking around for that gauze. I can't find it. The gauze is missing. The little container of gauze that they gave me, that I got to change every thirty minutes, is gone. I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding. I mean, I feel like garbage, and <laughs> I just dealt with the situation. I'm like, now I got to go back. So I did. I had to. I was halfway home. I had to turn around, drive back to this place. I'm searching the parking lot as I'm walking. This gauze has disappeared. I mean, I don't even know where it went to. I had it when I went out in the parking lot. Anyway, I'm looking under cars. It's like nowhere. So I go inside and I'm like, I lost the gauze. Now I'm like, I lost the gauze. <laughs> Just I have a mouthful of gauze. I'm still biting down on the gauze. So anyway, they give me more gauze. I go back out to my car. My car won't start. I'm like, Oh my gosh. So I take authority again. I'm like, you, mm, you know, and I got my car to start. So then I leave and I'm like, there was like a stronghold over that place or something. I mean, it was like a total attack. So then like three weeks later, okay, this heals three weeks later, I'm at the dentist and they're doing some preliminary works. They're going to do a bridge. 
um, they offered to do an implant, which they'd have to put cadaver bone. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't know where that's coming from. And the stuff I know now, I'm like, no, that's not going in my mouth. Nope, nope, nope. So anyway, um, they're going to do a bridge. So they have to do some, some preliminary work. So which involves, you know, putting a crown, a temporary crown on two of the teeth that, that are where they had to pull the other tooth. Anyway, so I prayed over the whole thing. I'm like, you know, it's, I'm not going to have any pain. Lord, accelerate this. It's going to be done like that. I'm not going to have any problems. <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking, yay, Jesus, this is going so fast. Number one, so smooth. Number two, so he's where he's um, going to put the temporary crowns on and the power goes out and the whole dentist office. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. They had to stop everything. They couldn't do anything. So they leave me in the room by myself. I'm, I start taking authority, <laughs> start praying in the spirit. I'm like, you know, in the name of Jesus. So, and then it wasn't coming on right away, the power. So I'm like, power of agreement. So I, I start texting in all caps, <laughs> my friends, and I posted it on X. And as soon as we got into agreement, me and my friends, boom, the power came right back on. And the dentist and the assistant come running back in. And they're like, we cannot believe this power came back on so quickly. It takes about 30 minutes every time the power goes off. And the power was only off about five minutes. So praise the Lord. But as soon as I was leaving the building, so they were able to finish everything they needed to do. And I'm I'm driving away from the building. And this is what I saw. This is the dentist office building. Look at all these hosts above the building. <laughs> I mean, the army showed up. Praise the Lord. That was amazing. Just shows the power of you know, we have more power and authority over the enemy. We don't have to put up with garbage. So that was awesome. Then that afternoon, I mean, it was like a special day. I mean, I just saw so many things. Let's see. So Diana Larkin had just posted a word. Um, I don't know if it was on this day or if it was like the day before, or very close to this time, she had posted um, a word about the um, winds of change hosts that were coming, winds of change hosts. So I saw this over top of my house and look at him. So, I mean, this is his head here. He's in profile. This is his eye. So just watch where I've got the cursor here. This is his eye. This is his nose. You can see his nostril right here. You can see his lips. So if I make him bigger, look at that. It's like looking at a profile of a person. This is his nose. These are his lips and he's blowing. So that's amazing. I sent this to Diana. And the first thing that, sh that she said was winds of change host. So that's a black and white picture because I felt like the features really stand out. Um, but I do have like the regular... This is what he looked like. So this is my roof down here. And then he was, you can see like my roof, you can see how big he was. He was ginormous. I mean, I was just like my jaw hit the floor. All right. And then I'll show you some more pictures of him kind of from a distance because he was pretty cool looking. So this is what he looked like. So this is my house. And then look at him up there. And a funny story, because um, on this day, I was outside like watering plants and stuff, and my phone ran out of batteries, completely dead, my phone. And so I just, I stuck my phone in the garage and I just went about my business. And I heard in my spirit, you better go charge that phone now. You better go charge that phone now. And I'm like thinking, okay, that's probably just in my spirit because I see things out here so much, or that's probably just in my flesh is what I thought. Because I see things so often, I'm like in my flesh, I'm worried I'm going to miss something. Because, you know, as soon as I don't have a phone with me, I'm literally running to get my phone lately. So 
Um, sure enough, I mean, the phone had no batteries and I saw this guy over my house and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I ran to the garage and I'm hunting around and I found some like thing my husband uses to like charge the car. So I grabbed this big, you know, brick thing and I, I find a cord and I plug it in there and my phone is still dead. You know, when your phone's dead, you got to wait for it to kind of, you know, get a little juice to turn on. And I'm like, come on, come on. Because sometimes what happens when you see these is they look like this and then they morph. So they don't look the same. So you'll see what he looks like in the next shot that I took. Um, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Like you got to have your phone right there and grab that picture. So as a little bit of time went on, this is what he looked like. Still pretty cool but he looks different, okay? So like now, like look, this is the back of his head. Like he's got a beard or something. Now he's like looking down to the street in front of my house. You can see his ear right here. This is his back. I mean, just, so if I, if I hadn't been able to get my phone charged enough to get that other picture, this is all I would have gotten. Then, I thought, wow, that's amazing. And so I went about my business. Then I looked back and I saw this other guy on my roof. <gasps> so this is drawing on him so you can see him. But it, when the next picture comes, it won't have the drawing. So look, um, this is his eyes, nose, mouth. He's blowing. Another winds of change, angel or a host. So... And there he is. So what gets me on these things is the eyes. Like, oh, it's so amazing. Look at his eye. You can see the white of his eye. I can see his eyebrow here. You can see his nose clearly. Stunning. And of course he's blowing. So it's another winds of change host probably. But he's just like hanging out right up above the house there. And then I have another one. Mm, yeah, okay. I showed enough of him. All right, so then, let's see. All right, so then on February 29th, um, I was led to Isaiah 23 and I titled it the economic hub of the wicked will be brought to ruins. And this is um, one of the uh, scriptures. Um, I don't know if you want to, I don't really call them prophetic words. They might be prophetic words, but um, one of the scriptures that I was led to that Kelsey Agama that I talked about at the beginning confirmed. So he confirmed judgment on New York, judgment on the hub, uh, the economic hub will be brought to ruins um, and uh, victory for Israel were the things that the Lord spoke through Kelsey. So on this, I wrote, after praying in the spirit and inviting Holy Spirit to guide me, I was led to Isaiah 23 this morning. Holy Spirit instructed me to open my Bible to a random page, then to turn 12 pages. I found myself at Isaiah 23. This is the fourth time I've been led to this scripture. I declared it prophetically, then researched its meaning for today. And I wrote, Isaiah 23 prophesies the shaking or collapse of the world merchants and the financial system associated with Mystery Babylon or the N-W-O thugs. New York City Economic Hub will be brought to ruins and eventually redeemed for the Lord's purposes. And Isaiah 23, um, several verses popped out to me, verse 5, 8, and 9, 11, and 12, 14, and 15, 17, and 18 in the Amplified Classic. When the report comes to Egypt, they will be sorely pained over the report about Tyre. Who has purposed this against Tyre, the bestower of crowns, those merchants were, were princes whose traders were the honored of the earth. The Lord of hosts has purposed it in accordance with the fixed principle of his government to defile the pride of 
all glory and to bring into dishonor and contempt all the honored of the earth. He stretched out his hand over the sea. He shook the kingdoms. The Lord has given a command concerning Canaan to destroy her strongholds and fortresses, which is Tyre, Sidon, etc. And he said, you shall no more exult. You oppressed and crushed one, O virgin daughter of Sidon. Arise, pass over to Kittim, Cyprus, but even there you, sh you will have no rest. Howl, you ships of Tarshish, for your stronghold of Tyre is laid waste. Your strength has been destroyed. And in that day, Tyre will be in obscurity and forgotten for 70 years, according to the days of one dynasty. After the end of 70 years, will Tyre sing as a harlot who has been forgotten, but again attracts her lovers. And after the end of 70 years, the Lord will remember Tyre and she will return to her hire and will play the harlot, resume her commerce with all the kingdoms of the world on the face of the earth. But her gain in her hire, the prophets of Tyre's new prosperity will be dedicated to the Lord eventually. It will not be treasured or stored up for her gain will be used for those who dwell in the presence of the Lord, the ministers, that they may eat sufficiently and have durable and stately clothing suitable for those who minister at God's altar. And I wrote, don't let this get you into fear. Repent and make things right with God. He is your provider. He is more than enough, more than we can think or imagine. And in my research um, that morning, I also happened to come across another prophecy concerning New York City that's from Alwyn, I think he pronounces his name Oos, Alwyn Oos, I might be mispronouncing his name, but I, um, I took a screenshot so you can see him. And he's a prophet from South Africa. So I need, this one was called What God Told Me is Coming to New York City, and you can find him on YouTube. So if you jot this down, if you pause this video here and jot this down, A-L-W-Y-N-U-Y-S is how you spell his name. And I do catch him periodically. He's very good, accurate. Also, I had did have um, where I looked um, upon awakening that morning that I was shown that. I looked at the clock upon awakening and I saw 717, which is something I see frequently. And I always refer back to Ezekiel 717 um, when I see that, which is every hand will go limp, every leg will be wet with urine. So people are going to be freaking out when that happens. Okay. And then on March 1st, I was led to Luke 4, and I titled it, Resist the Devil and He Must Flee. And I wrote, with my eyes closed, Holy Spirit led me to Luke 4 today. I declared God's word and did some research to further study it, and then this message came into my spirit. In the world, there are temptations, repeated invitations from the enemy to sin. The devil is persistent. Jesus taught us to combat every temptation by speaking the word of God. Put on the mind of Christ, take every thought captive, resist the devil, and he must flee. In Luke 4, verses 3 through 13 in the Berean Study Bible, stood out to me. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone. Then the devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. I will give you authority over all these kingdoms and all their glory, he said, for it has been relinquished to me and I can give it to anyone I wish. So if you worship me, it will be yours. But Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil led him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple if you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully, and they will lift you up in their hands so you will not strike your foot against a stone. But Jesus answered, it also says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. 
when the devil had finished every temptation, he left him until an opportune time. And when I posted that on X, I got a timestamp of 934. So I thought to look it up to see if it would confirm the message, and it did. So Psalm 93, and I included um, verses 1 through 5 for context. So the Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is robed. He has girded himself with strength and power. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. Your throne is established from old. You are from you are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up the roaring of their waves. And verse four is the Lord on high is mightier and more glorious than the noise of many waters. Yes, than the mighty breakers and waves of the sea. Your testimonies are very sure, holiness apparent and separation from sin with simple trust and hearty obedience is becoming to your house, O Lord, forever. And that was the Amplified Classic. And then I walked outside and I saw this, and I'm not sure who this is, if this is Jesus. Some people think they think it's Jesus. And let's look, because I've seen him several times up there now. So let's see. So this first one, I'm just drawing where his face is so that in the next picture, you will see him. And in the background, when I was seeing him, it looked like there was a cross. I saw someone that looked like a woman. Um, that was looking at him and stuff. So you can kind of see the cross back here a little bit. Um, there's like another face over here. The woman, I didn't really point her out. She's very hard to see. Um, like when I look at the picture, I can see her um, in a different view. That's a little bit further back. Um, so I'm not sure this could be Jesus. But you can see the eye. You can see the nose. You can see the mouth. You can see his ear. So it's like you're seeing a part of his face right there. I've got another one um, that I did see this week, which is just going to like last night after seeing it yesterday, last night, trying to go to sleep after seeing it. I was just like, Lord, oh, my goodness, help me go to sleep <laughs> tonight. I could not sleep after seeing what I saw yesterday. So I will get to that shortly. Anyway, isn't that amazing? So then I saw All right, so we got drawings on these so you can see. Um so the guy here on the left, several people thought um Moses and someone actually asked the Lord, who is that? And what popped in her spirit was Moses, Moses, Moses. Um, so I don't know, could be Moses. And then there's another guy over here. My drawing is not all that great. <laughs> but the guy on the right here has a very pronounced jaw. So that's why he looks kind of like that. So now without the drawing. All right, so here is his eye, his nose, you can see his nostrils right here, his mouth, you can see his ear. And actually, you can see an eye here and an eye here. Um, he has a beard, big white beard. Let's see if I can enlarge it for you. So you can kind of see him a little bit better here with it enlarged. You can clearly see his ear right here, though. All right. And then next to him is this other guy who's got a lot of hair. And um, my friend Deborah on X said maybe it's Aaron. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what Aaron looked like. I don't really even know what Moses looked like, but... And as I'm looking at this here, I see another face here, right here. Wow. It's amazing how when I look at these things, 
um, how much more stuff stands out. Wow, I'm just now seeing his face. Holy smokes. Can you all see him? Look at his eye right here. His nose, his mouth. Holy smokes, I wonder who that is. I did not see that before. Mm. Wow. Okay, I'll have to go back and study that. That's amazing. I did not see that. I can clearly see the eye. It really amazes me, the eyes um, on these hosts. I mean, they look like human eyes. You can see their, their pupils. You can see the whites of their eyes. Sometimes you can see their eyelashes. Amazing. So um, on March 2nd, I was led to Ezekiel 7, and I titled it, The Boomerang is Coming. And I wrote, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit led me to Ezekiel 7 for the third time. I heard the Lord say in that still small voice, what they do in the dark and hidden places I see and I have judged it. Recompense is coming for the evil in your land. The boomerang is coming. And Ezekiel 7 verses 1 through 4 in the message translation stood out to me. God's word came to me saying, you, son of man, God, the master, has this message for the land of Israel. End time, the end of business as usual for everyone. It's all over. The end is upon you. I've launched my anger against you. I've issued my verdict on the way you live. I'll make you pay for your disgusting obscenities. I won't look the other way. I won't feel sorry for you. I'll make you pay for the way you lived. Your disgusting obscenities will boomerang on you and you'll realize that I am God. So interesting because um, Diana Larkin had a word today. Today's March the 5th. So this was on March the 2nd that I got this. Um, and Diana's word today was the verdict has been handed down. So um, and then again, I saw um. Let's see. Okay, so on this one, I told you before that I see 717 on the clock frequently. So when I was led to look up the scripture, verse 17 of Ezekiel 7 stood out to me. Um, and then, um, and I think what the Lord is communicating through Ezekiel 717 is all of creation will be in awe, but the bodies of the unrepentant wicked will go limp and they will literally pee their pants when they see what God does. That scripture says every hand will go limp. Every leg will be wet with urine. And on that day, also the Lord gave Patty Tycro, um, who's on X, who receives prophetic words each day and Diana Larkin, another word that were right in line with what it says in Ezekiel seven, the wicked can scheme and plot all they want, but their plans will fail. They will be exposed. They will experience what they planned for us as the army of light takes authority and calls forth a massive boomerang. So um, you can find Patty. I'm going to give you her information to find her on X. And of course, Diana, you can find her on X. She's on many different social medias, but I'll give you the X um, information. Um, Patty gave a word on March 2nd called sound the alarm which went with this and Diana gave a word called the shakedown, a visit to the council chamber of heaven on March the 2nd. So Patty is on X and it's at P L T E I C H. So it's P as in Paul, L as in Larry, T as in Tom, E I C as in cat, H as in Harry, P L T-E-I-C-H. Um, and so you can find her on X. And then Diana goes by at journal Diana 11. At journal Diana 11 on X. And she's all over. She's on True Social. I think that's her same handle on True Social as well. On March 3rd, I was led to Isaiah 6. And I called it, I titled it, Whom Shall I Send? And I wrote coffee in hand. I headed to my prayer closet and began praying in the spirit. 
I invited Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to guide me to scripture. I was instructed to open my Bible to a random page, and then I was instructed to turn 12 pages. I was led to Isaiah 6 for the third time, and today happens to be March 3rd, so 3-3. Three, three. So third time, 3-3. Three, three. As I declared this scripture today, verse 8 popped off the page. And I wrote, God wants to reach the people of the world through those who are willing to cooperate with him. He looks for ready hearts to reveal themselves and be commissioned. Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Say, yes, Lord, use me, I will go for you. And Isaiah 6, verse 8 in the Berean Study Bible popped out. To me, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. So, prophetic numbers this was the third time I was shown this scripture, and the date was 3 3. So, and then when I posted this on X, I posted it at 10 10 and didn't realize I was at 10 10. And then I was also instructed to turn 12 pages. So, the Lord communicates through all these things, and this was what all those things mean. So three is perfect completion, fullness, resurrection, divinity, three stages of process for perfect completion, such as Egypt, wilderness, and then promised land. The date is 3-3, three, three, which is also, um, if you put those together, it's 33. God keeps his promises. The third time I'm shown this on 3-3, three, three, so that's 3-3-3, three, 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 three threes. Learning what you do not know crying out to God for something you urgently need. So Jeremiah 33, verse three, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. 10 is perfect order, timeline of God. God sets things in order according to his plan, kingdom. Kingdom is first mentioned in Genesis 10, 10. Isn't that something? And I've posted this on 10, at 10, 10. So I got this from um, another thing from Troy Brewer's book, Numbers That Preach. He says, you have 10 fingers, your work belongs to God, so don't get that out of order. You have 10 toes, the life you walk belongs to God, don't get that out of order. And then 12 means perfect government, God's authority, God is in control and actively ruling as king. He has the perfect plan. There were 12 tribes of Israel, 12 disciples. And then as an addendum, as I hit publish on the post. So um, after I post on X and post on True Social and spend time with the Lord and journal and all those things, which I'm trying to get all that together in the morning, it takes quite a while to do. So I always feel pressured to like start working because I also work from home. So I'm trying to like get up earlier and just have my time with the Lord and get everything done that I need to do with the Lord before I do anything else in my day. So I'm really putting him first with everything instead of spreading him out through the day. So um, anyway, then the next thing I do after all that is I, I go to the my blog and I um, post everything on the blog. So when I post it on the blog and I hit publish, I saw the time was 11.11 and I grabbed a screenshot of that. So 11, 11, amazing. It just amazes me how these, how I do things at these times and I don't even realize it. Okay. So then on this day, I saw in the sky, a lion. And so I'm going to show you this one so you can see what it's going to look like. And I'll show you without the drawing. Okay. And here he is. So he's roaring. So you can see his eyes. His ears are peeled back. Here's his nose or his snout. His mouth is wide open and he's roaring. He's a roaring lion. I have another picture of him. You can see what he looked like up there. There's another character here, a host behind him. And eyes, nose, mouth wide open, like they're yelling at something. 
saw a lot of yelling hosts this day. There's another one I saw, a big guy. So this guy was over my top of my next door neighbor's house. So I'll show you one without the drawing. So here he is. He's got kind of a pointy head. You can almost see like another host sitting on top of his head up here. Um, so if I make him a little bigger. Okay, so you can see another. Usually when I post these, people can see um, other faces within these hosts and they are very multifaceted. You can see um, lots of faces in here if you if you study it. Okay, so here's his eyes. It's got kind of a nose in this area, his mouth. And look how big his neck is. He's a big one. And then... This next one I called the yelling host. He's huge and he was yelling. I don't know if these are winds of change hosts or what they are, but he's big. He's got kind of a, almost like a triangular shaped head like the other one. Look how big his neck is, huge. I'll show you without the drawing. So you can see his eyes here, his nose, he's got a, his mouth is wide open. This is like his chin. He's got like a, like I said, a triangular shaped kind of head, big neck. You can see him there. Amazing. If anyone would have told me I'd be doing this, I would have said, you have lost it. All right, so this is another view of him, of what he looked like over top. So this is my roof right here. So he was just right next door. And they kind of, they drift. So they move over my house eventually as they go. Another picture of him. But that's without the drawing, so you can kind of see what they look like. You can see his face up there. Can you see him? So there's his eyes, his nose, his mouth is wide open. Amazing. So let's see what else we got here. Then I saw a big dragon. And I drew on him in this picture, so you'll be able to see him. So his eyes will be here, his big body, his big snout. So big dragon. And when I see the dragons or anything that looks kind of evil, um, I take authority. And if I'm not sure, I just go, okay, if there's anything evil, I take authority over it. I'm not 100% sure if it is or not. But yeah, he was a big one. He was huge. I saw actually on this day, I saw a few different ones up there. Okay, on March 4th, I was led to Daniel 5 and I titled it, The Writing is on the Wall. Um, and I wrote, with eyes closed, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit led me to Daniel 5 for the fifth time today. So I don't know if you notice how he's doing that with the numbers, okay? So Daniel 5 for the fifth time. And I wrote, rebellious leaders who worship false idols, blaspheme and disobey God, especially the fake resident, number 46, at the top of the food chain, have been weighed in the balance, found wanting, and will be removed. In Daniel 5, verses 23 through 28 and 30 through 31 in the Amplified version stood out to me. 
and you have exalted yourself against the Lord of heaven and the vessels of his house have been brought before you and you and your nobles, your wives and your concubines have been drinking wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which do not see or hear or understand. But the God who holds in his hand your breath of life and your ways, you have not honored and glorified, but have dishonored and defied. Then the hand was sent from the presence of the Most High God, and this inscription was written. This is the inscription that was written, many, many, tekel, eupharsin, numbered, numbered, weighed, and divided. This is the interpretation of the message. Many, God has numbered the days of your kingdom and put an end to it. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales of righteousness and found deficient. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given over to the Medes and Persians. During that same night, Belshazzar, the last Chaldean king, was slain by troops of the invading army. So Darius and the Mede, Darius the Mede received the kingdom. He was about age of 62. And there was lots of things with prophetic numbers on this day. I was shown Daniel 5 for the fifth time, which I said. So that's five. And then also, if you put those together, that's 55. And then I was noticing as I was typing up the blog post that the timestamp um, that I received on X when I posted it on X was 1013. And that's also prophetic. So if we break it down, five is the grace of God. God gives us the ability to overcome the valley of the shadow of death. We are given the authority of Christ to conquer any situation the enemy would use to take us out. 55, Satan is found 55 times in the Bible. It is he that by the grace of God, we overcome and tread under our feet. 10, God's kingdom, timelines, how God reveals his plan and carries it out in perfect order. God is setting things up for his purpose. And 13 is rebellion. And this is what today's message was concerning. An interesting fact, rebel is found in 13 verses throughout the Bible. The name Nimrod means to rebel. He was the founder of Babylon and all the world religions and is the 13th descendant from Adam. And that came from Numbers That Preach from Troy Brewer. So thank you, Pastor Troy. And as I hit publish, on that blog post, and I looked at my phone, the time was 1.11, which is God's beloved son. And so um, when I saved the screenshot, so I took a screenshot of that. So I took a screenshot of that. And when I saved it to my computer, it was number seven in the sequence of the photos that I had saved for Daniel 5. I find that a lot of times when I'm saving the photos, the, the file number, so I number them one, two, three, four, five, the numbers also line up prophetically. It's amazing how God just orchestrates all that. Um, seven is by the spirit of God. So thank you, Jesus. So now, this was the photo that kept me up <laughs> after I saw it. So let me show you the one with drawing on it first. All right. So um, originally I was kind of looking at, see this whitish stuff here? It kind of looked like a host on a sled. <laughs> and that's what I was like looking at. And then after I posted it, I saw him. And I was like, oh, my Lord, it is Jesus. And it's Jesus crucified. So here is withdrawing. So you kind of get an idea when I show you the next picture. And I put this on X and uh, there was a lot of agreement that this was Jesus crucified. So here's his eye. Here's his eye. You can see his face is disfigured. So his mouth goes like, if you follow my cursor, the mouth is disfigured. Okay. He's been battered. There's his nostrils. You can see the crown of thorns here. There's another face right here. I don't know who that is in like the chin area. 
but this is his chin. Um, so see if I can make him any bigger for you. Yeah. So I hope you all can see him. That's just amazing. We are close to, we're getting closer to Passover. So somebody, um, my friend Deborah on X mentioned, you know, if that, if the guys above the house, if one of them at least was Moses, um, and then if, you know, this is Jesus, obviously crucified, um, you know, both of them were at a time of darkness and we're close to the Passover. Um, so interesting. Anyway, I hope y'all can see him. Maybe take a screenshot of that and just study it. If you don't see him, you will just kind of walk away and come back and you'll be like, oh my gosh, there he is. Okay. So today I was led to Isaiah 5 and I titled it, Let God Prune, Dig, and Water You. And I wrote, Holy Spirit led me to open my Bible randomly this morning, then turn five pages to Isaiah 5 on March 5th. <laughs> you see how he's doing that this week? So that's 555. So I wrote, the Lord gives us his beloved vineyard, abundant grace. He continually prunes, digs, and waters. But we've resisted until we've become wild grapes, ripe for judgment. Isaiah 5, verses 1 through 7 in the CEV version stood out to me. I will sing a song about my friend's vineyard that was on the side of a fertile hill. My friend dug the ground, removed the stones, and planted the best vines. He built a watchtower and dug a pit in rocky ground for pressing the grapes. He hoped they would be sweet, but bitter grapes were all it produced. Listen, people of Jerusalem and of Judah, you be the judge of me and my vineyard. What more could I have done for my vineyard? I hoped for sweet grapes, but bitter grapes were all that grew. Now I will let you know what I'm going to do. I will cut down the hedge and tear down the wall. My vineyard will be trampled and left in ruins. It will turn into a desert, neither pruned nor hoed. It will, it will be covered with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain. I am the Lord all-powerful. Israel is the vineyard and Judah is the garden I tended with care. I had hoped for honesty and for justice, but dishonesty and cries for mercy were all I found. And I wrote, many wish the Lord would stop pruning, digging, and watering. It can be painful, but it is necessary to be fruitful and grow. It is worse when the Lord stops doing it. Let him tend to you, repent for disobedience, yield to his pruning, digging, and watering in order to prosper. So prophetic numbers 555 is complete grace. Christ is found exactly 555 times in the King James New Testament. It is by God's complete grace that anyone ever finds Christ. And I received a timestamp of 921 when I first posted this message on X today, which is another confirmation of Isaiah 5. 9 is fruit bearing or judgment. 9 deals with both sides of God's judgment. When judgment is life, it represents the spirit bearing fruit and forward progression. When, this, when the judgment is death, it represents the spirit putting a stop to something and finality. 21, so the time stamp was 921. So 21 is formed from seven times three, the manifest spirit of God. God reveals 21 when the spirit has perfectly completed his work and everything is seen for what it really is, dark to light. 21 represents the light of truth. And then later, as I was conversing with the Lord and a journaling, I wrote down the time 10.05. So 10 is five and five. So again, it was 5.55 five, five, five. and on March the 5th. So that's 5.55. Five, 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 five. <laughs> and um, I wrote in journaling with the Lord, I wrote, Father, I thank you for allowing me to see Jesus crucified yesterday. 
and for what you have revealed to me today in scripture. I am ever in awe of how you line things up perfectly and order my steps. Praise you, Lord. I give you all the glory and honor. What is on your heart today, Lord? And he said, daughter, my grace abounds. I am always seeking the hearts of my children that they would turn their faces toward me and seek me in return. I am, that's all caps, I am the one that gives them life. I am the one from whom all blessings flow. I am the length of their days. I want relationship with my children. I do not want even one to perish for lack of knowledge of me. My children need to repent and come under the shadow and shelter of my wing where there is protection from the storm. I want to gather them all as chicks unto my bosom. I am their only protection. And I said, praise you, Lord. I thank you for your protection and your grace. And he said, shalom, my daughter. So as an addendum, um, when I posted the blog on X, I put a link for the blog every day on social media. And when I did that, I got um, a timestamp of 1051. 10 is divine order. The Lord is ordering my steps. And 51 is Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right, persevering, and steadfast spirit within me. So, and what's so fascinating is that particular verse is 51 verse 10. And the time was 1051. So it's a mirror. So that's amazing. So if there's anyone watching today that has not invited the Lord into their heart to be their Lord and Savior, I want to invite you to do that right now. Um, it is the best decision you'll ever make in your whole entire life. It has been life-changing for me. Um, I have no fear. I have no worry where my provision's coming from, where my help is coming from, where my protection is coming from. I, I do not fear the enemy. I don't fear anything. I don't even fear death. Um, and so if you would like to invite the Lord into your heart, Say this prayer with me, and you have to say it with your voice. Father God, I recognize I am a sinner. I come to you asking forgiveness of my sins. I confess in my heart and speak with my mouth that Jesus Christ is your son, and he died on the cross for my sins. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my heart, my soul, and my life. I accept Jesus as my personal Savior, and I praise you for making a way for me. I declare by the blood of Jesus that I am saved. Jesus, I invite you into my life, and I pray you continue to reveal your love to me by your Holy Spirit. I ask you to have your way with my life. I thank you for the new creation you have made me. So thank you for saying that prayer with me and welcome to God's family. If you said that prayer today and you just invited Jesus into your heart, put a comment and let me know. So I'm going to say a closing prayer. I'm using this book um, from Brenda Kuhneman again, Daily Decrees for Government and Nations. And the one that I'm going to you uh, say is called Delivered from Wicked and Evil People. So if you will be in agreement with me as I make this declaration. Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree deliverance from every attack that would be attempted from violent, from violent irrational, and unreasonable people. We say no assailant can succeed in any form of physical or verbal assault. We break the power of every attacker, raider, intruder, liar, accuser, persecutor, or evil antagonist in the name of Jesus. We declare they cannot enact violence against us for our faith, our message, or our stand for truth. We prophesy that no weapon formed against us can prosper because the angels of the Lord stand watch to protect us from evil. We speak protection over our loved ones and our property. We plead the blood of Jesus upon our lives to save us in every situation 
and to prevent the workers of darkness from any scheme that would steal our peace. We prophesy deliverance, escape, and rescue by the hand of the Lord against every wicked snare. We say deliverance rests upon us, upon our families, our homes, and communities, and we live in peace and safety in the name of Jesus. And the scriptures are 2 Thessal Thessalonians 3, verses 1 through 2 in the King James. Finally, brethren, Pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith. And then Psalm 140, verse 1 in the King James, deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man, preserve me from the violent man. So thank you again for joining me and I will see you on the next video. Love you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day.